Now, if you're a social media user, it's highly likely you've commented or shared news articles or interesting current affairs stories. If you're in Vietnam, you'll need to think twice about that now because the law known as Decree 72 has come into effect on Sunday. It restricts Facebook, Twitter and blogs to personal use only. Now, it's a move that has outraged internet companies and media freedom groups, but with more than 12 million people on Facebook in the country, just how can they enforce the law? Well, I'm joined by Hung Wen from the BBC Vietnamese Service. And Hung, I mean, what exactly are the government saying to people about what to do? Well, it's very interesting because uh, according to the decree, then you are only allowed to share personal information and it means who you are married to, how many children you have, and what time you go to bed, and what time you have breakfast, etc. But then the government official, after a re very strong reaction from the public, now they are saying, no, 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 we are not banning you from sharing news. Uh, but then in the decree, it doesn't, doesn't say so. So <laughs> it, it leaves people wonder, you know, what the, the decree actually means to them. And that's why there has been a very, very strong reaction from uh, people. And indeed, there is a campaign going on uh, for a petition against the decree. And uh, they are inviting people to send opinion to a Gmail account, antidecree72 at gmail.com, in, right. in Vietnamese, of course. And uh, so that's why uh, it, it has caused so much controversy. Right, so people are wondering as well, are they actually banning this or not? Exactly, and, but they understand it to mean that they, from uh, now on, they are banned from sharing items on Facebook or Twitter, despite the fact that some of the official, not in the decree itself, but they, on the official media, they are say, saying that, no, we are not banning you. But they still take it to mean that uh, you have to be really, really cautious, because the decree says one thing, and the official say uh, another thing. And also, in the official media, they are saying one thing. And in the unofficial media, in the blogosphere and on Facebook and Twitter, mm -hmm. then different things are being said. So it's very, very difficult to, to know what it actually means in practice. And, I mean, Vietnam has a huge number of, of social media users. This is going to be quite hard to monitor, surely. I think it's almost impossible possible to enforce such, uh, such uh, rules and many, many um, uh, analysts, they are saying that this is more like an ideological tool uh, to, to show that we want to control things, this is out of control. You cannot discuss freely on Facebook because you, you ca once you can't do it on our official media that we can control, then our control should be applicable to the virtual sphere and mm. as well as the actual sphere. So that's why they want to show that you know, we want to do it, we are willing to do it. Uh, but if they can really do it or not, I think it's a big question. And Hung, it's not just an empty threat. I mean, there are bloggers who are actually in prison for, for what they've written online, but not under this particular article. Of exactly. Law. They have uh, stronger hammers. They have uh, the uh, uh, rules against people who conduct uh, propaganda, what they call propaganda against government. And they have the subversion charges. And people have been jailed up to 10 or 12 years because of what they uh, wrote online. And uh, just yesterday, one such blogger was released one month earlier than the term. So uh, they are having some c uh, small uh, gesture to show that they are open. But we, we, we don't know. We, we can't be sure. Hung, thank you very much. Hung Wen from the BBC Vietnamese Service. Thanks very much. In